This video gives you a quick overview of the HD11 web interface. When you log in with your username and password, you might first see the setup wizard, which walks the installer through the setup process. When it's completed, the wizard will no longer appear on startup. Let's skip the wizard and explore the home page. Here you can find the overall status of the system and the state of the antenna. In this example, the system is OK, the antenna is tracking the DirecTV 101 satellite, and the signal strength is good. This page also shows your true heading, reported by your NMEA device, and the antenna's pointing direction relative to the bow. On the Satellites page, you can select which satellite to track from the antenna's extensive built-in library. You can filter the list by region, or create your own list of favorites. You can also disable a satellite to remove it from the list. In the unlikely event that you don't find your satellite in the library, you can add it if you know its tracking parameters. The parameters of any other satellite can be modified as well, minimizing downtime when a service provider makes a change. In either case, be sure to enter data for both tuners. The antenna may use either of them when searching for the satellite. If you have the optional smart switch installed, the Smart Switch page allows you to rename your receiver groups and select which group to enable. For example, you might select your bank of DirecTV receivers when you're operating in North America and your linear receivers when operating in Europe. No rewiring is necessary. If you have two HD11 antennas installed, this page also shows you which one is currently active and allows you to manually switch to the other one. Now let's go to the Settings page. Under General Settings, you can change the vessel name that appears on the home page or relaunch the setup wizard. Under Network Settings, you can configure the wireless and Ethernet connections of the antenna control unit. If you enable Wi-Fi, be sure to select the security mode and set a password. Under Advanced Settings, you'll find a few tools that should only be used if directed by KVH Tech Support. Incorrect settings may affect the antenna's performance. OK, let's move on to the support page. Here you'll find system status information, including serial numbers, software versions, and GPS position. If any errors were detected, you'll find them in the event history, which can be saved to a log file. You can also restart the system, view the product manuals and FAQs, or generate a diagnostics log. This log captures a wealth of information that's very helpful for troubleshooting. Finally, the command line provides a maintenance port interface that should only be used by KVH trained technicians. Now let's go to the updates page where you can upload a new version of software to the antenna. If you've previously downloaded the update file from the KVH portal, you can upload it from your laptop or a USB flash drive. If you don't have the file, you can download the latest version over the internet, provided the antenna control unit is connected to the web. This concludes our brief tour of the HD11 web interface. If you have any questions about the interface, please contact KVH Tech Support.